Hey there everyone, Hitesh here back again with another video. So we are discussing a little bit about the game development. In case you haven't watched the previous video, go ahead and watch the previous video where I have talked about how you can get started with the game development. So in this video, we'll be talking about what actually is a game engine and few components that game engine take care for ourselves. So this is gonna be a pretty interesting movie. Let's get started. So before I go ahead and discuss about what Game Engine is and it what does for us, I have to go a little bit back and talk about how computers and how mobile phone works and especially the operating system for that. Now let's talk about the computers. At the sole heart of the computer, if I just say that computers just work on zeros and one or simply the low voltage or high voltage, you can understand that. That is pretty obvious. You have learned that in the school or maybe high school as well. But what would be typical if I would say, hey, this is a machine which works on high voltage and low voltage and all you have to do is uh, write a hello world there or just play a movie there. I know this is going to be a pretty difficult task, but we all the time design such apps and it is so much easy now with the abstraction layer that has been created for us so that we can design some cool uh, players like video, video LAN or VLC or maybe a quick time player and everything like that. And similarly, if I go on to the mobile, if I'll give you some chips and say, hey, you know what, you have to utilize camera with that. But look how so much easy it is to code an app uh, in Android or iOS or Windows, whatever it may be, that you just have a simple device in your hand and with some touch screen and you are able to open up a microphone or maybe a camera or maybe a GPS setting. So the layer of abstraction is so much good. Now you might be wondering why I am saying all of these things. I'm just saying all of this to set a stage for you. Now, a lot of people think that game designing would be so much daunting, it must, it must be so much scary, but it's not actually, it's rather much more simple. What makes it simple is just like in the Android, it's the Android operating system on which you can design your app. Similarly, we do have some game engines which makes our job so much easier. But again, it's again a rather bit more advanced than the app development, but again, it's much more simpler with the help of game engines. So what are those game engines? Now game engines are simply an abstract layer which handles a lot of tasks for you. Like for example, inputs, physics, networking, a lot of things which we'll be discussing in this video. So what are the popular game engines? Now, some of them are like uh, the Cry engine or the Source engine or the indie game developers favorite Unity 3D. These are some uh, game engines which you can utilize. But again, before decide, deciding the best game engine for yourself, one tip I would like to give yourself. Now, make sure that you don't look for the game that was designed in that engine. For example, Far Cry might, might be designed in the Cry engine and you might be saying, hey, I'm gonna design a Call of Duty game. I'm gonna choose this engine. No, you should not be doing that because most of the uh, engines are really specialized in one or the other thing, but most of them are core heartedly same. And for your first game or that I would like to call as an beta game, it is completely okay to go with any engine. But make sure that you understand the pricing of that game engine. Some of them, or in fact, most of them are completely paid. So you have to pay a little bit of the money to use these game engines. But again, some do have other uh, payment options. Like for example, Unity 3D has a very uh, interesting gaming and uh, rather pricing structure. So with that, if you earn more than $10,000, then you have to pay a certain amount to the Unity 3D. But again, we can talk about the pricing structure later on. But this should be your first point because you are about to design a crucial game and you have to stuck with your game engine. Okay, quite a lot of stuff with that. Now let's go ahead and talk a little bit about what kind of things the game engine handles for yourself. Now, the first thing that the game engine does is handling the event and the polling. That is just the input. So for example, you might be having a lot of input when you play the game. For example, you have keyboards, you have mouse, your joystick access changes a little bit and just like that. So we use majorly a mapping table. Now, all of the game engine call that with a different names, but usually it's the mapping table in which certain kind of input are uh, injected and based on that input, we just utilize what would be the position of the player or what would be the axis that we'll have to rotate or do we have to shot a fire or we have to trigger some script to trigger the shot or maybe reload the stuff and just like that. Now, this is all handled in the input stuff. And again, we don't have to worry a lot about that. We just have to call a function or do a quick click and everything is being handled by the game engine itself. 
The next thing that Game Engine handled for ourselves is the 3D graphics. Now, I'm not just talking about the 3D model that you have uh, created in the Photoshop, but yes, somewhat like that. Now, most of the rendering work of the graphic is done using some advanced and modern tools like, Mo like Maya or maybe Blender. Again, Blender is free and Maya is somewhat paid. But again, uh, we will go, may maybe we can go much more in depth about the graphics and everything. But again, it's a little bit different graphics than what you might be designing in the paint and everything. Yes, it heavily uses the Photoshop, but again, rendering is pretty much important. And that is why you see the 3D games and you can rotate your guns pretty much here and there. And just like this room, everything is being created and rendered. Next thing that our game engine handle for ourselves is the sound engine. Now, most of the game engine do come up with a built-in sound engine, but the best part about the sound engine is you don't have to worry about anything because in the usual programming stuff, when the one sound actually ends, then your next line of code is gonna be working. Otherwise, you have to use multi-threadings. But again, game engine handles all of such things without a hassle. And of course, nobody likes a game of Call of Duty without the nice gunshot sounds or maybe the grumpy voice that they give. Again, uh, sound is the most important part of a game. It might be a simple cling or maybe a simple grumpy voice, but again, having sound in your game is the most important part. Next, let's talk about the physics. Physics is one of the most important part in the game engine. Now, when you design your game, you might be having a plane or maybe a ball and you want to drop the ball on the plane. Now, it's not that easy because you have just created an image or a graphic which have no idea our, with our real world physics. So we have to apply a lot of behaviors or physics to that plane or to that ball. We have to say, you are a solid object. Nobody should pass by through it. You should follow the gravity as well. You should follow the collision as well. Again, we don't have to worry much about them. It's just a matter of clicks or calling a few scripts. And Game Engine handles all of us, all of these things for us. Now it's somewhat similar to like calling a microphone. Like uh, if you want to call the microphone actions, you just to call a web kit or just import some things and calling audio videos and that's it. You have called the microphone. Similarly, we have to utilize the physics. And again, the more complex the physics is and more adjustable it is to the graphics, then the game would be much better. The next part of the game is nowadays networking. Now, luckily for us, we don't have to call up any servers or anything. Game Engine again handles everything in the networking part as well. Now, most of us like to play uh, Call of Duty or maybe Counter-Strike. Maybe your friend is sitting in the States, you are in the London and you want to play the game with him. Again, networking helps us with that. Now, most of the engine nowadays which are coming and in fact in the recent updates for all of the engine I can say uh, almost 90% or maybe all of them are coming up with the networking capabilities. Moving to the next part, that is the GUI. Now you might be thinking we already having a graphics and talks about uh, talked about that, but again a graphic or GUI is a little bit different. Now the menus that you see on the game are like choosing the options and everything are usually designed in the game itself. Previously, it used to be uh, somewhat like the Windows advantage or DirectX advantage, but now you feel just right in the game while selecting all those options. So the nasty menu bars and the cross buttons are now completely modifiable within the game engine itself. And that gives us a lot of advantage of designing the game. And you just always feel right at the home in the game itself. Now, last but not the least, the scripts. Now, you might be hesitant with the programming, but game development cannot be fulfilled without learning some programming skills. Now, I have also discussed in the previous movie that if you already know Swift or something, then you can completely move uh, directly in the 2D gamings and just like that. And we have also discussed previously how you can move on to the windows and other stuff. Let's not talk about that uh, right now. If you want to really watch that, go ahead, watch the previous movie. But again, scripts are really the most important part. And in fact, most of the behaviors that you add to your objects, like your uh, machine gun man, or maybe your plane, maybe your balls, are everything done by scriptings. Not most of them, but really, uh, technically it's most of them or all of them, but you don't have to worry much about that. There are a lot of functions which you which are already built up for you. You just have to call them, modify a few variables, and there you go. So in fact, most of the behaviors that you would be adding would be highly based on your game engines. 
And again, uh, some game engines like Unity use C-Sharp, some use others, some use others. So there is no such one thing that you really should be focusing like, I'm going to be learning Python and I'm going to be designing a game. Yes, you can, but I think you would be much more satisfied by the decision and choosing a language once you do a little bit research about your specific game engine, what you're looking for. And based on that, then you can focus up on the programming or where you want to go. For example, as I have said quite a number of times, uh, you have to learn C Sharp for the Unity and uh, uh, you can design some of the quite good games in the JavaScript as well, but most of them are 2Ds. So again, do a little bit of research. Now you have plethora of knowledge about the game development. I think you would be pretty happy with that. So go ahead, find out your favorite engine, have a little bit research on it, find out what programming language you can utilize to code in that particular game engine. Is it free? Is it not? And what you will be having with that? So with this, I would say if you haven't yet, do subscribe to my channel. If you like this video, make sure you hit the like button. It is really the motivator for me. And make sure that you share it on Facebook, Twitter, wherever you are. And in fact, if you want something uh, with me or if you want some videos specifically to be created by me or you want to share some knowledge, you want me to share some knowledge, then drop me a note on the Facebook. I'm highly active on the Facebook. So drop me a note there. I would be waiting for your note. In case you just want to say thanks for this video, comment down below or just say a thanks on the Facebook. With this, I'll catch you up in the next video.